Happy Thursday and welcome to this week's edition of Telegraph Herald More Than The Score. Hopefully you've all dug out of the snow that you've had to deal with over the last couple of days. But middle of winter also means the middle of high school basketball season. I'm joined with Brendan West, our boys basketball reporter, and he's going to talk about a little bit of a, a mid-season report on the high school basketball season. Brendan, we have a couple teams in our area, both sides of the river, that are undefeated yeah. uh, in January, and that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good sign. Talk a little bit about Makokota, a team that's kind of been under, you know, been a little bit. Uh, uh, had fallen on some hard times in recent years, but they're one of the undefeated, undefeated teams right now. Yeah, I mean, um, it was hard to maybe uh, picture going into this season that at this point, uh, the the only undefeated Iowa team that we cover would be Makokota. But if you look at the stats um, and just kind of the prestige that they've been able to do this by, um, it's not that surprising anymore. We're talking about the top-ranked team in Iowa, Class 3A. Uh, they're second in three-pointers attempted in Class 3A. They're fourth in, or sorry, second in, second in 3A in point differential. Fourth in three-pointers attempted in 3A. Um, they've beaten uh, teams by an average of 17 points per game. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's led by a very stellar senior class. You've got Abe Becker, Kane Kopp, and Macklin Shanahan all uh, averaging double digits for that team and all seniors. So it's a very experienced team. I was a little bit disappointed um, just in general this last week because there was a really good showdown with Makokota and Beckman that unfortunately uh, got postponed due to the weather. So we'll be looking to see these guys pick things up again on Friday at Marion, uh, but definitely a very successful start for the Cardinals. Uh, the thing that really impresses me is the WOMAC conference is very tough, year in and year mm -hmm. out. Uh, obviously, Western Dubuque moved up to the Mississippi Valley Conference this year after being in the WAMAC for several years. But tell me a little bit about how impressive is it to you that uh, Makokota can have this kind of record while competing in a tough conference like the WAMAC? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I think I think when you look at a lot of the really successful teams, and Makokota is definitely one of them, it's, it comes down to defense. Um, and I've spoken to their coach, Matt Hartman, and he said that this is a team um, that in the offseason really hampered down on getting better defensively. And when you go and look at uh, some of the impressive wins they've had, uh, at the time they were playing West Delaware at Manchester, mm -hmm. not an easy environment to play in at all. They were third ranked at the time were the, were the Hawks, but um, um, Makokoda was able to hold them below 40 points. You know, and, and, and when you can do that to teams constantly, uh, that's going to win you a lot of games. And it's it, you're right, it's not an easy WAMAC conference to navigate through. Um, but Makokoda so far has handled it, handled it really, really well. And I'm really excited to see uh, where this season goes for them. Transitioning from one really good conference to another, but this one on the other side of the river, mm -hmm. uh, the SWAL Conference, the Southwest Wisconsin <laughs> Activities League, as it is called. Uh, has an undefeated team as well in Darlington. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about Darlington. That's a very impressive because from top to bottom, that's wall is probably as good a Division Four conference as you're going to see in the state of Wisconsin. What can you tell me about Darlington and the success that the, the Redbirds have had this year? Well, um, similar to Makokota's and different. They're 13-0 and at this point. Um, they've earned the second rank in Wisconsin Division IV. Um, and, but that conference, I mean, is pretty darn loaded. We're talking about a ton of kids that are probably going to go on to play college basketball. But they've handled the test against Mineral Point, which is also ranked. They've handled the test against Fenimore, another ranked team. Cuba City, not an easy team to play. They've managed to beat them. Um, and the trick has been holding the scores low. Only four opponents this year have scored more than 50 points against Darlington, and you're going to win a lot of games if you can hold them to within that 40-point range and, 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 and have the talent that the Redbirds do have. When I speak of talent, of course, I'm talking about Carter Lancaster, a sophomore, just a sophomore who leads the team in scoring. And then striker Fitzsimons, he was on that state team a couple years ago. Um, he's back and he's doing some damage together. They average 30 points per game. Um, so it's definitely a well-built Darlington team this year in a really well-built conference, as you said. The, the thing I was, I read your story in, uh, in Wednesday's paper about the depth of this wall. There are Division One players all over that league, mm -hmm. guys who are, like you said, are going to play college basketball. How did that happen? I mean, it, you're talking about Southwest Wisconsin where, you know, there are a lot of smaller communities. 
you know, obviously a lot of smaller division basketball programs, mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of division one players come out of, you know, small schools like that. How did we get to this point where there's so much talent in that swall and you're talking about guys who are going to play college basketball and possibly even play Division I? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know what I think it does start? I, I think the Southwest Wisconsin in general really likes its basketball. It's a hotbed for basketball. And when you have these kids growing up year after year watching the Jerry Pettigrews coach and watching all these different teams with their stellar athletes go far in these tournaments and stuff, when they come of age, they want a little taste for themselves. So when you're seeing the guys like Mineral Points, Braden Daly, just a sophomore, Carter Lancaster, as I said, just a sophomore, you got Brady Olson in Cuba City, who's a junior. You've got all these different players who are basically just um, you know, growing up and wanting to make this theirs. They're wanting Adam Larson from Fenimore is another one. Make this, take this region to great heights as far as basketball is concerned. And I think that's why we're starting to see really young players come up and do the kind of damage they're doing. And they're young. They're going to be here for a couple more years. So it's really exciting time in uh, Southwest Wisconsin for sure. Definitely exciting time of the year, even though we've been digging out of the snow for the last couple of days. Uh, but it's going to be a, a great finish on both sides of the river and in, in Illinois, too. we got some good schools over there, too. So tournament time is always fun for mm -hmm. high school basketball. And that's what we're going to be looking forward to in the next uh, month to six, six weeks. That should pretty much do it for this week's edition of Telegraph Herald More Than The Score. Hopefully Steve Mortman will dig out of all his snow and be able to return next week. But for now, this, I'm Telegraph Herald Sports Editor Jim Leitner, and this is Brendan West.